So this is our first EDA tutorial. And uh, what we are going to do is to complete all the tasks here. Basically, we are going to set up cadence. We are going to run a simple DC simulation for an MOS transistor. So to access cadence, as I have mentioned, uh, on Blackboard, we have different tutorials to access Linux and basic uh, cadence command, how to set up cadence. And we're going to go through all the process. And right here, I'm using a Mac machine. The first thing I can do is to open the Mac terminal, okay, right here, open the Mac terminal. Or if you are using Windows machine, just follow the instruction how to remotely log into win Windows, okay. And then we are going to do SSH, Y, this is my username, at ccat.ece.ttu.edu. All right, so this is a command to remotely log into the server. So after that, I hit enter. After enter, I'm gonna enter my password. So as I entered my password, as you can see, now I am in, uh, logged into CCAT. So now I am at the location of my account at CCAT server, all right? And the first simple Linux command we should keep in mind is ls. Basically, if I do ls, it tells me what are the folders and files under my home directory. All right. And the next thing what I can do is, uh, actually, if you are very familiar with Linux, then you can do a lot of commands to accomplish a lot of tasks. But if we are not familiar, then we can get the a graphic user interface. So just type this genome session and then hit enter. So as we have done this, a new window will pop up and this is the desktop of Linux, uh, our Linux account, all right? And uh, it looks pretty similar to what we have either in Mac or, Mac or in Windows. So the first thing I hope we can do is, if you don't have this file browser on your desktop, you can go to Applications, System Tools, File Browser, and then drag it to your desktop, okay? Because I, I feel this is more convenient. This is more like my computer in uh, my computer in Windows machine or Finder in Mac. Okay. Yes. My genome is not working. It's not working. Did you follow the instruction? Okay. So for Windows users, I, I think we're gonna just watch the tutorial and after the tutorial, after the class, I'm gonna help you uh, what's happening for the Windows. Okay. All right. So if you if your genome is working, then basically you should have this. And if you double click file browser, then you have a window showing all the folders and files under my home directory. Okay, and I can navigate just as what I normally do in Windows, right? So for example, I can go to this cadence folder. I can go up. I can go to this C5 folder. All right. And uh, if we have done that, then the next thing is how can we set up Cadence environment, all right? To do that, I'm going <coughs> to add another tab. So if you do Control T, you actually add another tab, okay? And in this tab, I'm going to navigate up, up, and up, so all the way to the uh, root directory of this, of this uh, server, okay? And here what we can see is we have different folders. For example, if we go to home folder, then you can see, uh, you can see like uh, several users, right? And you can see this like test, TTU, things like that. And if you go to, if you go to data, then here we have some data shared by different faculties. Then if you double click shared, you will see Dr. Ben, Dr. Fan, 
and uh, Dr. Nikubin, this is my name. If you double click this, you'll see those, those files, right? Those are the PDK, so uh, design kit for different process. And what we are gonna use is C5 because we are using AMI 0.5 micrometer process, okay? So double click C5. And what you can see is uh, we have one folder and we have two files, all right? But we also have hidden files. So if you go to view, then show hidden files. Then you can see those files with the name dot something. Those were hidden at the beginning, all right? And now double click readme. And readme tells us how to set up the design environment. It's pretty straightforward. First, create a project directory under your home folder. So be careful, it's under my home folder. So right here, if I go to the first tab, this is my pretty much my home folder under home TTU, then my username. This is my home folder, right? And uh, inside this folder, I'm gonna create a folder. And for this folder, I'm gonna name it as class demonstration, all right? Class demo. And I'm gonna double click, enter this folder. So now look at readme again. We have done the first thing. The second thing, copy four files folder to the created project directory. Okay, so we have to copy .cds environment, .cds initial, .cds li library, and model those four things into my class demo. This is my project folder, okay? All right, so I'm gonna find model, CDS library, CDS environment, and CDS initial. Those are the four files. <coughs> And uh, I can just drag it into class demo, okay? Does this make sense? So pretty much now I have copied them into my project folder, okay? This is where I am gonna run cadence. And uh, now next, the third thing, use .bashrc to replace the same file under your home folder, okay? This is a little tricky. So let's see what is under bashrc. So if you double click bashrc, basically it's a very simple file, okay? The only thing we really need is this definition, okay? So this definition uh, to be uh, maybe easily understood, you can understand this as something to tell your Linux environment that I have a C cadence directory I'm gonna access so that I can use cadence software, okay? So this is a definition for the system. You can either copy this into your home directory. Remember, now we are talking about home directory, so it's gonna be right under your username, okay? In your home directory, there is a .bashrc file too. You open it, make sure this command, no, this definition is right there, okay? So you can either just simply copy this line into your own .bashrc, or what you can do is you can simply replace, you can replace the .bashrc under your home directory using the .bashrc under C5 setup, okay? All right, so let's assume we can do that. Then in Linux terminal, go to home directory, type source.bashrc. So that's the fourth thing we have to do. And this means in my home directory, I'm gonna Right click, I'm gonna open terminal, okay? And uh, in terminal, I am now under my home directory. I'm gonna type source.bashrc, okay? Basically, this means I have updated .bashrc file. So I must let the system to reload it, 
to understand what is defined inside the dash RC, okay? Update, update the system. And this only has to be done once, okay? After this is done, let's see what's next. In Linux terminal, ls into your project directory, then type virtuoso and you will be done. Okay, so let, let's see if this is gonna work. So I'm gonna close readme. I've got all the information I need. <coughs> so now in the terminal, remember when we loaded dot bash rc, we did it under my home home folder, right? And what now I have to do is I have to enter the project directory. So after I do ls, I see a list of folders and files under my home directory. I have to do cd class demo to enter my project directory. Oops. Uh, class demo to enter my project directory, okay? And uh, one thing I want to mention is actually, I, I give you a bad example. Let me exit this first. I give you a bad example. Uh, this is my project directory, class demo, right? I want to rename it because sometimes if you have space, it may create extra trouble. So I'm gonna erase this space between class and demo, okay? I'm gonna name this folder as class demo and open terminal. And in the terminal ls, I see all the folders and files, cd into class demo. And normally, if you have, you have typed cla, then you hit tab, it will automatically fill up or the, the entire folder name or file name. It's very convenient, right? Now hit enter. So now what we can see is I am inside my account, but now I am under class demo folder, okay? And uh, right there, if I do ls, I'm gonna see the files I put there, right? Now I can run cadence. Type virtuoso and so then you will see the cadence window is popped up, all right? So now we have successfully loaded cadence. And one thing you have to double check after you got those two windows is make sure the larger window we call it library window. On the library window, you see a list of those libraries, NCSU, okay? NCSU actually stands for uh, North Carolina State University, because for those traditional process, they actually started working on this many years ago. So the libraries, the standard libraries, uh, were actually related to them. Okay, but also for those uh, standard uh, com traditional process, actually even for industry design, sometimes people are using this library. They are very reliable. Okay. So we have two windows, smaller window, CIW window. This is like the core of Cadence, all right? And the larger window is the library window. And I'm gonna quit this larger window. So sometimes if you only have this smaller window, one thing you can do to bring up the library window is to go to Tools and then go to Library Manager, okay? Then you see this library, okay? now. Uh, anybody is following me on your computer? Okay, I'm gonna create a new library. So I'm gonna go to File, New, and select New Library. And uh, now I have to enter the name of new library. So for this, I'm gonna enter a name as, um, let's see, class demo, and today's demo is EDA tutorial one, so I'm gonna name it as EDA1, all right? After that, click OK. After we click OK, <coughs> there will be a small window popped up, and this is very critical. Here, you can't just click <coughs> OK 
you must select the third option attached to an existing technology library. Okay, very important because for the new library I'm going to create for my design, I have to tell the, the software that I'm going to design this circuit in 0.5 micrometer process, right? So now choose attach to an existing technology library, click OK. After that, I have a list of standard libraries and I'm going to choose the first one, AMI06. Okay, this is the process we're going to use. Click OK. After that, on the list of library, I see this library created by myself. Okay, so now we have to be very careful. Those libraries set up already and you can't change them for all the NCSU library and those analog library basics, those things we can change. But EDA1, this is the customer designed library. This is actually our design and we can change that. All right. So after I have this library, I'm going to create my schematic, right? Very intuitive. So go to File, New, Cell View. And uh, for the cell type, I'm going to choose Now I'm Designing Schematic. And in the future, you may want to choose different options. Like if you do layout, you have to choose layout, right? But for today, we're going to design a schematic. So keep them uh, as they are. And uh, for the cell, I'm going to type IV Simulation. This is the name of the schematic, okay? Now click OK, and the small window pops up about the license. So this you just need to click Yes, all right? So now we get a new window will be created. This is my schematic window for my design IV simulation, all right? So now things becomes very intuitive. We simply need to add components and then run the simulation. Okay, so to add components, remember uh, on Blackboard I uploaded the bind key for Cadence schematic. Okay, so you only have to hit the button I. I, I stands for instance. So I'm gonna add instance, and uh, now I have two small window popped out. Right, add instance, and here we have to choose. Where does this instance come from? Which library does it come from? Okay, I'm going to add a transistor. So I have to use NCSU analog parts. So for all the custom, for, for all the process related components, I'm going to choose this analog parts, NCSU analog parts. And on the list, we see we have MOS, PMOS, uh, other things, RLC, right? So I'm going to choose M transistor, okay? After I select N transistor, I'm going to select MOS4, which means I'm going to use a MOS transistor with four terminals, okay? Then the other window will be automatically populated. The only thing we need to change is the size of the transistor, okay? W and L. Okay, we cannot change the process now. The only thing we can change is the design parameter, and that is the size. So for the width, we're going to use 19.95 micrometer. And for the length, we're going to use 1.35 micrometer. All right. After that, move my mouse into schematic, and you can see this transistor is already moving around with my mouse, right? So now I click here, move to this window, and land my transistor on the schematic. All right. Can you guys see the screen clearly? If not, do you mind if I turn off the light? I can. Okay, thank you. All right. So now we have a transistor. Another uh, thing we, we want to add is ground connection, right? If I want to simulate IV curve, definitely I need a ground. So hit the button I again, add instance. Now ground is a standard component. No matter what process you are using, you always need ground. So it's a little bit different. 
we're going to fight ground from analog lib. This is a universal library, no matter what, what process you are using. Go to sources and uh, global sources. You have GND stands for ground. Okay, so now land the ground on the schematic. All right, very simple, right? And after we add the ground, I guess I'm going to add control voltage for the gate and drain so that we can simulate the IV curve of the transistor. So hit button I again. What we are going to add? Let's guess. DC voltage, right? So if it's DC voltage in the future, when you get really familiar with cadence, you don't even have to navigate through this window. If you know the name of the cell, you simply type the name. DC voltage in cadence is called VDC. Okay? And uh, then this window is automatically populated. I'm going to set up the DC voltage. I'm going to set up the DC voltage to be VGS. Okay? This is for the gate. Okay? And the VGS obviously is the variable I defined. Okay? So I'm going to land this on cadence schematic. All right? Like this. And what else do we need? We need drain to source voltage, right? So I'm going to add VDS for drain to source. Place it there, OK? After that, intuitively, what's next? Connection. Connection. Thank you. So I'm going to use button W. W stands for wire. So I'm going to wire those components, make the connection makes a connection and uh, makes a connection, right? Just like this. And uh, I need two more ground, all right? Does this make sense? You can either make a connection like this to assign a ground, or just in case if you want to copy, then the hot key, the bind key for copy is C. Hit C, click this guy, then you can move it around. Does this make sense? OK, place it over there. Next, in case in the future, if you want to move those components around, M stands, to, stands for move, right? Very intuitive. Click it, drag it to this place. OK, does this make sense? If I want to undo, I guess it's U, undo, OK, intuitive. But besides M, there is another short, uh, Bind key S. So let's see what's the difference between S and M. If I hit S, stretch, and then click this component, drag it, what's happening? Not only the component is moved, but also it automatically extend the connection. Okay? So move and stretch, they are different, slightly different. All right. After that, I'm going to save my schematic. Okay, and besides this save button, we have another button, save and check, check and save. So if you do this, it's going to check out if there is any error in the schematic design. And now we see there's no error, but there's indeed we have one warning. Okay, and if you want to understand what is a warning, then go to the first window we had when we started Cadence. So go to the first window, and in this window, it tells us the warning information, okay, this small window. Okay? Basically, we are missing connection for body terminal, and it's highlighted here. right? So I'm going to add a connection for the body terminal. And for MMOS, would you please tell me where shall I connect the body? Ground. OK, thank you. Nice. Now, check and save. No problem. So no window will pop up if there is no warning or no error. Okay. Next, simulate it. So go to launch. ADEL. ADE stands for analog design environment. So basically, this is a simulation environment. Okay. Click yes. So in analog design environment, several things we have to do. First, go to setup. We have to set up the simulator. Most important thing, if you don't do this, you may get confused when you choose analysis method. So the default 
simulator here is not what we're going to use. What we really have to use, very useful for analog designer and RF designers, is Spectre. Okay, so choose Spectre, click OK, and then go to Setup again, Model Library. This is interesting. Why do we need Model Library? Because we have a transistor, we have to model it, right? So basically, the model library will be provided by Foundry. If you are using Intel process, then the model library will be from Intel. If you are using Global Foundry, then the model library will be provided by Global Foundry. So click this button. And remember, at the beginning, when we set up the simulation environment, we had the model folder copied to my uh, project directory. Right, so I'm gonna click this model folder, and we have a whole bunch of models. And honestly, this is a small number. In modern process, you're gonna have probably even more. Okay, so let's guess. All the files starts with a letter either N or P. So what does N stand for? M MOS. Great, thank you. And P stands for PMOS. Right. So I have MOS on, uh, in my schematic, so I'm gonna choose N. And I'm going to choose NTT. Let's guess what does TT stands for. Typical, typical. Because again, we, 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 we know that in CMOS process, we suffer a lot from process variation. right? Sometimes the process fabricated will be slower than normal, and sometimes will be faster. That's why you have slow, fast, fast, slow, typical, typical. And the two letters is because we have to consider both n-type or p-type. Okay, all right. So now we're gonna use typical, typical. Click OK. We have added the model library. And the next thing I really want to do frequently is to go to session, save state, because we are remotely logging into the server. We don't know, sometimes the wireless may have some trouble, and sometimes the server itself may have some trouble. So we have to uh, constantly save our updated design, right? And our updated simulation status. So I'm gonna save it in cell view. Cell view is more reliable, personally, I think. So I'm gonna save the state in cell view, and I'm not going to change anything at this moment. Just click OK. This means if you go to the library manager window, you see not only the schematic, but also our Spectre simulation state. You can load it in the future. Okay. So now go back to my analog design environment. Next thing, I have to set up analysis. Okay, so now let's see. I can go to analysis, choose type of analysis. I'm gonna do DC analysis. You have a whole bunch of different analysis types, right? And uh, I'm gonna click this, save DC operating point, so that after simulation, I can reload uh, and get all the DC operating point. Click OK, all right? And what else? Are we missing anything before we start simulation? The, the input and output. Input output actually in cadence in this kind of simulation, every state, every point, every network will be recorded. So you don't even have to define input and output. But we really defined two variables, right? So I have to assign variable values. Does this make sense? Okay, so go to analog design environment. We have a tab variable and copy those variables from cell view, from my schematic. After that, on the left side, you can see two variables already automatically picked up over there, okay? And double-click that, I'm gonna assign a value. VDS, let's say, 2.5 volt, click Apply, all right? And select VGS, gate voltage, let's say, 0.9 volt, all right? Does this make sense? It should be able to turn it on because in traditional process, threshold voltage is 0.7, right? Okay, click OK. After that, let's try if I'm lucky. Simulate. All right, yeah, indeed I'm lucky. So this window tells us the simulation status and it tells us the simulation is completed 
convergence achieved in two uh, iterations. And the total time required for analysis is blah, blah, blah. And basically, if you see this, then you, you, you will be quite happy. Simulation is finished. All right. Close this window, go to results, annotate simulation results on schematic. So I'm going to annotate DC node voltage. So after that, on the screen, as you can see, we have 0.9 volt set up on the gate, and we have 2.5 volt set up on the drain. All right, does this make sense? Next, also this color, this uh, orange color, uh, tells us basic uh, component parameter, right? The width is 19.95 micrometer, and length is 1.35 micrometer. All right. After that, I'm gonna continue add things. Go to result, annotate DC operating point. All right. So now we can see DC operating point. ID drain current is about 30 microam, and this current is also 30 microam because this is the only current path, right? Okay, and the VDS is 2.5, so DC operating point of this guy is shown here, okay? And the next, what else we can do? I can go to result, I can print, okay? And if I print DC operating point, then go to schematic. Select the component, select this transistor. Then this is nice. I get a whole bunch of DC operating points related parameters. Okay. For example, you can read out the capacitance, CDS, CGB. You can also read out what is uh, transconductance. So if I go down, you will see we have transconductance shown here, okay? And you can also read out GDS, which is inverse of output resistance, small signal output resistance, right? And on the bottom side, you can even see the threshold voltage, okay? So everything you are interested, pretty much it's included here, okay? Now next, if we look at our task of our EDA tutorial, Sorry. If we look at our task, we have to simulate IDS versus VDS, sweep VDS from 0 volt to 5 volt, okay? And plot curve for different VGS, okay? So let's see what we can do. All right. I'm going <clears> to <throat> go to my analog design environment, double click this DC analysis, okay? DC analysis. If I double click it, originally we set up DC analysis like that. If we further explore the options on the bottom, we can sweep variables. We can sweep temperature, we can sweep design variables. So I'm gonna sweep design variable. And now I can select design variable from here. I'm gonna select, I will sweep my VDS from zero volt to five volt. Okay, does this make sense? All right. So start from zero volt all the way to five volt. Okay. By the way, even if you can't follow me on the computer, if you have any question, any doubt, feel free to interrupt me and let me know. We can discuss. Okay. That will be very helpful. So I set up variable sweep VDS from zero to five. Click OK. And after that, I'm going to run simulation again. So run simulation, you simply need to click this traffic, uh, traffic light button, right? Okay, and uh, now simulation is done and you see a long list because pretty much uh, the simulator simulated the DC operation at different VDS. Okay, it's done. I'm going to close this. I'm going to plot the current. Okay, so I'm going to go to result, plot, uh, uh, let's do direct plot. Okay, use the second option, direct plot and choose main form, okay, choose main form. And on the main form, I can plot voltage, current, power, a lot of things, but I am interested in ID, okay, drain current, right? So select current, and then I have to, it tells me I have to select a terminal on my schematic, okay, because current is related to a terminal, okay? Oops. So, 
And another tricky thing is on the bottom, it says add to outputs. All right, I'm going to select this. And later on, I will explain what does this mean. OK, so now after this is done, I move my mouse to the schematic. And if you want to plot current, normally it's better to select a terminal of a standard device instead of process specific device. Okay? Because some foundry, when they build up this device in cadence, they don't provide the capability of plotting, extracting current from the terminal. But for standard device like the voltage source, definitely you can plot the current. So I'm going to click this terminal. Okay? After that, I get a nice curve on the waveform window. Okay? And this curve basically represents ID as a function of VDS. Okay? Do we have any questions so far? No? Great. So if no question, then uh, we are going to go back, go to my analog design environment. So now on the outputs, you will see this equation. Okay? This explains why in the plot main form, I click add the information to output. Okay? So if I select that, so remember when I in direct plot main form, I selected this add to outputs, right? If I select that, then the information will be added there, okay? And it means in the future, whenever I run a simulation, then if you check this, the program will automatically make the plot again. Okay, does this make sense? All right, and you can also select, I want to save the data, okay? So after that, we have selected ID versus VDS. Next, I'm going to sweep VGS because we want to look at this curve at different VGS. Okay? And uh, to do that, then I have to use another tool because I'm already sweeping variable in DC simulation. I'm, I'm going to add another dimension of probably linear step, linear sweep, right? So I go to tools, parametric analysis. And in parametric analysis, I'm going to add a variable. And I have three variables. Two were defined by myself. And the third one is the system variable temperature. Okay? This is very important because in the future, we're going to learn temperature may kill the design you have. Temperature is very, uh, uh, very important. Okay? So now I'm going to add a variable VGS. And for VGS, the value I originally set up is 0.9, but I now want to sweep it from, let's see, I don't remember. <laughs> the requirement is to from 0.9 to 1.5, okay? So I'm going to do it from 0.9 to 1.5, and I'll do linear sweep, okay? The step size will be 0.2 volt. All right. So I added one more dimension in the sweep, and now I click this green button. So on the on the bottom, it shows the status, and uh, quickly, Cadence finished the simulation. And as you can see, now we have ID versus VDS for different values of VGS. All right. Does this make sense? Okay. All right, do we have any question? No, great, very easy, right? Okay, so after this, the next thing is for homework, how do you submit the result? Uh, you definitely can do a screen capture, okay? And uh, sometimes this will waste a lot of ink on your printer, okay? So if you're using your own printer, don't do that. Go to File, you can, you can save the window and load it in the future in Cadence, but that's not how you how you export the result. You can, you can try export. Let's see if we have export here. No, but one thing in this version of Cadence, Cadence 6, you have is a save image. Very handy tool. Click this. And I'm going to choose the directory. I'll, oops, sorry. I shouldn't create this. <laughs> Class demo, okay. I go to class demo because this is my project folder. I'm gonna uh, name the file I will save 
I'm going to na name it as a uh, result waveform. Okay, and I'm going to save it in, for example, you can save it in Windows bitmap format. Okay, and uh, here you can select this replace background color with white. Okay, this will save a lot of ink, and uh, when you make a presentation, it will be clearer. So after that, click Save. Okay. Once we have done that, go to my project folder, class demo, and you can see this file already saved over there. Very nice, with a white background and with uh, those uh, those curves. Okay. And you can also explore other options uh, when you save it. And uh, a lot of times, people actually would like to use vector format for the graph. So you can actually save it in vector format too. So you can choose, for example, PDF format, right? You can choose PDF format. So I actually like PDF format. So click Save, and then go to the project folder. You'll see a PDF file, okay? Double click it, and the nice thing for PDF File is when you when you zoom in or makes the graph larger, then the fonts, the characters, and the curve will also become larger without losing any resolution. Okay, vector format. All right. So with that, I think we have solved. Let's see. With that, we have solved the first problem uh, of the EDA tutorial. Right. And on the plot, manually indicates the border between child and active region. You can do this, okay? Just use a pen, do it manually. And the third thing, set VGS equals to 0.9 volts, VDS equals to 2.5 volts, and print DC operating point to check out GM, GMBS, GDS, and VTH. We actually have done this, right? And if you don't remember, we can do it again. Let's see. Yeah, in analog design environment, I have the nominal value of VGS, VDS set up, and I want to disable the sweep. I'm gonna focus on 0 0.5, 0 0.9 volt of gate source voltage and 2.5 volt of drain source voltage. I'm gonna run a simulation. Okay, and after the simulation is done, I'm gonna go to result print, print the DC operating point, and uh, click this transistor, then you can read out GM, GMBS, uh, GDS. So you can read out GM, GDS, you can also read out the threshold voltage, okay? So everything, pretty much you can get it. All right, does this make sense? Okay, and uh, next, let's see, What's next? Okay, continue with third question. Use GDS to calculate R0. Okay, this is very simple, right? 1 over GDS equals to the small signal output resistance. And compare the R0 with RON read from DC operating point. So from the DC operating point list, you can also read out RON. And you have to compare your hand calculation of R0 with RON and uh, tell me if they are different or not, not okay? And uh, it turns out they are totally different, okay? And the conclusion is RON is more like for linear operation digital systems, and R0 is the true output resistance for our analog analysis, okay? RON is actually the on resistance for the channel, okay? So the fifth, the last one keeps the body connected to the ground, but now connect the source to 0.1 volt, reports the threshold voltage again. Okay, so in order to do that, what we do is I can go back to my schematic. I'm gonna copy a DC voltage source, right? And I'm gonna remove, delete the wire. Okay, so I have a DC voltage source here. And I want to change the parameter, change the voltage. So in order to do that, you have to change the property. So hit button Q, okay? 
And uh, for DC voltage, I'm going to set it up as 0.1 volt. Click OK. All right. And remember, whenever you have changed the schematic, you do have to check and save before cadence can run. If you don't save it, then after you click this button, you're going to have some error. Okay? You have to check and save. This is a very popular uh, mistake, mistake at the beginning when we start to use cadence. Now run simulation again. Okay. After simulation, go back. So as we can see, after we add this voltage 0.1 volt for the source, now the current of the transistor has changed, right? If you still remember, I think originally the current was 13 microamp, and now it's only 3 microamp, okay? And uh, uh, we can do result, print, DC operating point, and choose this transistor. And now read out the new variable, new DC operating point. And as you can see, the threshold voltage has changed significantly, right? And what is what is the reason? Body, Body effect. Great. All right. So with this, I think we have uh, concluded our EDA tutorial one. Do we have any question? No. Okay. If Sorry, no, can yeah. You start again with the how to start cadence that part. Okay. Because uh, I'm using Windows and it's not running on my system. All right. So let's do this. I'll I'll stop my 